Good morning, and welcome to this virtual service of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Door County. My name is Hank Wolston. I'm a member of this fellowship, and today I'm honored to be your service leader. I'm very pleased that you have chosen to join us. I'm especially pleased that you're joining us today because it is, to me, one of the most special of holidays, a remembrance and honoring of those who have sacrificed to protect us and to ensure our safety and to sustain our hope for a better and brighter future. Would that we could, all of humankind, live together in peace and eliminate the strife and battle and warfare that give rise to this remembrance holiday. Until that happens, however, let us join in remembering. Let us join in honoring. I last served as your service leader on the 28th of March, about two months ago. My, how things have changed for the better. More people now vaccinated than not. Positive rates falling to lows not seen in a year. Hospitalization and mortality rates dropping precipitously. It is heartening to see the news of those very positive trends. But it is also sobering to know that there are a great many who either cannot or have not of their own volition gotten vaccinated. And that nationwide, there are still daily positive rates numbering in the tens of thousands. And that in other parts of the world, for example, India, the virus is tireless and care is rare. But here in Wisconsin and Door County, I believe we've turned the corner. And I believe that the opportunity for us to join together in service in our beloved sanctuary is within sight. Till then, however, be well and stay safe. I will now light the chalice, and as I do so, please pause with me for a moment to remember and to honor. Sarah provides us with regular emails that alert us to joys and concerns of the Fellowship's members and friends, and I invite you to read them and to revel in the joys and to reach out in the hurts and to remember the sorrows. It is our custom to, at this point in our service, recite the unison affirmation, please join me. We gather together to seek knowledge and wisdom to explore freely the vast reaches of mind and spirit and to celebrate within a caring community those truths, ancient and modern, which give meaning and direction to our lives. I will now recite the doxology. Please join me. From all that dwell below the skies, let songs of hope and faith arise. Let peace, goodwill on earth be sung in every land, by every tongue. If you're ever in Youngstown, Ohio, there is a wonderful art museum that you should visit there. It's called the Butler Institute of American Art, and it's a gem. Amongst works by Winslow Homer, Mary Cassatt, Edward Hopper, Romare Bearden, uh, there hangs a painting by Robert Vanal, an American Impressionist, painter of the last, of the, of the 19th century, actually, uh, a painting that was originally called Where Soldiers Sleep and Poppies Grow. It's a giant work, measuring nearly five feet by nearly nine feet, and it makes a correspondingly giant impact. It certainly did on me. It was painted in 1890, 20-plus years before World War I, and the name of the painting was subsequently changed to In Flanders Fields. It's entirely possible that it may have inspired John McRae's poem in Flanders Fields, which the Canadian doctor wrote shortly after the death in battle of his best friend. And with that poem began the tradition of poppies to memorialize the fallen, a tradition that continues to this very day. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. 
and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe to you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. Though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Let us take that torch and hold it high, hold it high to illuminate a path of peace. Hold it high to shed light on a world where might and fight is not the right way to solve things, but where love and compassion and caring see us sharing a brighter future for all. Let it be so. The Reverend Karen Herring, Associate Minister of Unity Church Unitarian in St. Paul, Minnesota, and a friend of Phil Milkey's, has spoken at the fellowship many times over the last 15 years. She's the author of Writing to Wake the Soul and has led guided writing sessions here at the fellowship and at many other places across the nation. She is joined in today's service by Michael Orange, a member of Unity Church Unitarian who served as a combat Marine in Vietnam. He's the author of Fire in the Hole, A Mortar Man in Vietnam, describing his wartime experience, and a new re newly released book called Embracing the Ghosts, PTSD and the Vietnam Quagmire, that serves as a bookend to those stories. Uh, Michael loves performing songs from the 60s and 70s at the Minnesota Veterans Home on his vintage Gibson guitar, that is prior to the pandemic, and he enjoys biking with his wife, Cynthia, and being a doting grandfather for his identical twin grandsons. I now invite you to join Karen and Michael. <laughs> 